So the rules are simple. I have nine hours to make a procedural city generator using just Blender's geometry nodes. I can't use any pre-made stuff, so all has to be from scratch. If you don't know what a geometry node is, it's basically programming for 3D modeling. And you can use it to build some really cool and complex stuff. For example, if you're wondering what these nodes do, they make this animation. I've seriously fallen in love with nodes, and if you haven't already, I hope you do too. While we're on the subject of nodes, let's meet a couple of them now. There are a few nodes that we'll need to make this thing happen. I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot more than just four, but at its core, these are the ones that do the heavy lifting. So first, we'll need a node that lets us create points that we can then later use to put things like trees and buildings on. The distribute points on faces node is perfect because, as you might imagine, it distributes points on faces. So we plug in a mesh, and then it takes all those faces and just puts points all over them. So now that we have some points, we can start putting things on those points, which is what the instance on points node does. You just plug in points, plug in a mesh, and then it puts instances of that mesh on all the points that you give to it. So if you can imagine a city where everything is exactly the same, all the buildings are the same height, the same shape, it's pretty boring. I wanted to make my city feel more alive by adding a lot of variety, different shapes, different sizes. And that's where noise comes in. Noise is super useful for random generation and giving you the extra detail because it allows for a lot of variation with just a few simple parameters that you can set. Blender has a few different types of noise to choose from, but I picked the Voronoi noise for a couple reasons. First, it creates a nice shape that looks like the areas of a city. And second, it has a distance to edge feature, which I mean already kind of looks like roads right out the gate, but we'll see that in action later. Finally, our last node for now is the color ramp which lets us adjust the line between points appearing and not appearing. And of course, it has other uses too, like choosing the color of a texture. Uh, that'll come into play later as well. So it took me about two hours to get all the basic stuff together. Um, and those were kind of boring hours. So I just cut some moments out of my nine hours of footage. So you'll get the gist of how the process went. Also, I apologize my computer sounds like a jet engine in the background most of the time. So, yeah, sorry about that. Cool. You know, I kind of think the skyscrapers look best at like 90 degree angles, but the houses should be kind of randomly rotated. I feel like that's kind of how neighborhoods work most of the time. Plug this in, and now we have a max urban height setting. Nice, that looks pretty good. Now there is a node that I left out of the first chapter, which is the random value node, which you probably guessed generates a random value. You can set the minimum and maximum range of this value. So it's perfect for creating individual heights of each building. It can all be different, uh, but you get a set how tall and how short it can be. It just gives the city even more variety because all the buildings are different heights. A more interesting color map here. Um, um, I also, you know, there's something funny about like a farm being surrounded by skyscrapers. I mean, that's kind of like. How, how life goes sometimes, so. It kinda looks bad as well. Um, plug that in. Oh, that is actually perfect. That looks so good. Just crank the detail up. Well, see, part of the problem is like you don't want to make the buildings too distinctive, and then looping is really obvious because uh, it sticks out a lot more when it's 
like a, a very unique building. So then when it's copy pasted everywhere, it's like, oh, well, pff, come on. I mean, it looks really overwhelming. So I guess it's it's not really urban to suburban to rural. It's just like urban to suburban kind of. So at this, and then the max we can change that. Yeah. Okay. So I just added an extra step because I wasn't paying attention. Nice. That looks. I think that looks better with just slightly bigger trees. Um, okay. I think that's about it for trees. Um, let's put a lot on pretty much everything we don't want lights on. Um, so that's cool. You know. It is what it is. Nice. Oh, perfect. I don't know. Got rid of the transforms and then just plugged this into the grid so that that's actually what is um, affecting the position um, is the, the bumpy terrain. So. All right, it's five o'clock, we're done. We're finished, let's go. Figured I'd take you on a little tour now that we're all done with the nine hours and show you some of the features. So there's a bunch of things you can adjust here. Uh, you can change the world size. I'm gonna keep it kind of small just for the sake of not making my computer blow up. But I mean, just to show off, we can crank that up to like 55 maybe. Got a nice big city. Crank that back down to like 20, just so it's easy to work with. Uh, there's a roadiness setting, which basically um, changes the changes the smaller streets, so it makes them um, smaller, larger, essentially. You can change the urbanness as well, so all the way from 100% urban, so it's all like skyscrapers and urban buildings, and then 0% is just like suburban. And uh, I set defaults for everything as well, so it's easy to go back to what it looked like before. There's a night mode, so you can toggle that. It gets rid of the sun, and then just puts these little lights on all the buildings. Some of them are a little weirdly placed, um, floating in space but um, as long as you're not looking too close I think it looks pretty good the grid detail is basically the number of vertices on the grid terrain roughness is a fun one um, this is actually why I added grid detail so you can make it really bumpy uh, but then you obviously want to smooth that out uh, the roads don't really like super bumpy terrain oh hold on I think I might have broke it there we go. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, something you need to kind of handle with care. Let's crank that back down to the default. You can also change how dense the trees are. So all the way up, uh, it's very green. And of course you can combine that by like changing the urbanness down and then it'll just make some, some nice forests. Seventy-ish on the urbanness looks pretty good. You can change the the maximum height of the urban buildings. 
And then there's just a bunch of noise settings. Uh, so you can change like the seed and just like reshuffle your terrain. Um, you can change, you know, just the regular standard stuff. One of my favorites is the roughness. So it goes from like super ordered, nice blocks, um, probably more of like, like a more modern city. Let's crank that down, there we go. Um, very organized and then all the way on the other extreme where it's just, just kind of random shapes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, uh, I'm honestly really happy how it turned out. I, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. Although there are quite a few things I would have liked more time to figure out, the beauty of a short deadline is it makes you focus on your priorities. If I don't have a deadline, I get carried away really quickly. In fact, over the past couple months, I just finished a project where I spent more than 300 hours on a single node project. Um, you can check out the video in the description for that. It was really fun and I enjoyed it a lot, but I also really enjoyed having a short deadline because I actually had to get stuff done instead of just messing with things endlessly to get them just right. It had to be get it good enough and then move on to the next thing. Now, that being said, there were a lot of things that I had to put on the cutting board and get rid of, uh, but I would have loved to add them. Things like cars, rivers and lakes, bridges, special areas like airports, more buildings and texture variety, and maybe I'll come back and add those in another video in the future. Now, the thing that bugged me the most uh, that I didn't get to was the fact that buildings don't know where they are in relation to roads, meaning that buildings can be placed onto roads, which isn't ideal. So I didn't have time to address this in my original nine hours, but it just bugged me so much I had to go back in and fix it later. So it actually ended up being pretty, pretty simple. I just used three nodes for the most part. So I have a noise texture, which is basically taking the texture that creates the roads and then comparing it to a value. And then if it equals that value, plugging that into the selection for a delete geometry node, which then just gets rid of anything that meets those criteria. So anything on the road just gets deleted. While I was at it, I also combined the road and terrain layers into a single mesh by just adding the materials together into the same texture, which I honestly should have done earlier instead of making different meshes for each layer because that makes things more complicated. So by combining it, it makes it not only more efficient, but it also makes it cleaner. So I would really love to do more node jams soon. If you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future episode, definitely leave a comment below. Also, let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. I would love to hear from you. Also, I'm on Patreon now. So if you have any interest, you can support me on there. I'll put the project files for both the nine hour version and the slightly improved version with no buildings on roads. I'll put that up there. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.